This is our uh, daily 930 trip out to the Mackinac Bridge. We'll be arriving at the bridge area in about 10 minutes. We'll be slowing down out there, giving you a few quick facts about the bridge, and we'll be right on our way to Mackinac Island. Today I'm on Mackinac Island. Um, you're not able to ride your bicycle across the Mackinac Bridge, which is the big suspension bridge that um, connects the lower peninsula of Michigan to the upper peninsula. So one of the ways to cross the straits is by taking the ferry to this island called Mackinac Island, which is a historic island out in Lake Huron. And I'm going to spend a few hours on the island and then there you can take a ferry um, the rest of the way across the straits so that by the end of the day I'll be on the lower peninsula of Michigan. But behind me you can see the harbor at Mackinac Island. Um, I'm standing in front of the, the fort which was a historic uh, strategic place during the War of 1812 and I'll show you the fort right now. So yeah, I'm not really riding my bike today. I'm going to be a tourist here on Mackinac Island and then take the ferry across to Mackinac City and find a place to camp and that'll be the end of this day. So uh, I will see you later. Bye. Hello. So um, no motorized vehicles are allowed on Mackinac Island. So I'm standing here along Michigan State Route 185 which is a state highway that's dedicated only to bicycles and um, horse-drawn carriages. All the freight on Mackinac Island is moved, moved by horse-drawn carriages and all of the tourists uh, use bicycles to get around. So it's kind of interesting being on a, on a state highway. I've been on state highways this whole trip and now there's one that's just dedicated for bicycles.
Hi everyone, I'm here in Pelston, Michigan. Um, I've been traveling this morning on the Mackinac to Petoskey Rail Trail, which is a direct route uh, from uh, the Mackinac area down into, into the uh, part of the Lower Peninsula that I'm headed towards. Um, the trail's been gravel all this way, and here in the town of Pelston, they actually have paved it for through the town, which has shown me um, how much extra work I've been doing on the gravel part of the trail. It looks like this trail is fairly new. The gravel has just been put down recently, so it's pretty soft in a lot of areas, and I find myself um, working a little harder to get down the trail. So just a note for people that are looking to use the Mackinac to Petoskey Trail. Um, it is it, it is a little slow going. Um, the, it, it's rained recently, so the trail is wet, a little wet in places. So that could be part of it. But anyway, um, it's a it's a pretty it's a beautiful trail. A lot of nice signage tells you where there's restaurants and lodging along the trail, and um, and I plan to use it all the way through Petoskey and then hit get another trail down to Charlevoix. Anyway, it's about 10 o'clock in the morning and I'm ready to have my uh, second breakfast for the day. And I see a cafe right over there that I've got my eye on. So I'll talk to you later. See ya. Bye. Hi everyone. So I've come to the end of the, the gravel trail here on the Mackinac to Petoskey Trail. And from here on forward, it's paved, which is going to be an improvement in uh, in rideability. But uh, I just wanted to let everybody know what a pleasure this trail was riding. Um, it's been uh, 23 miles, I think, on this gravel trail. I saw one other human being the whole time I was on there. and But I saw two deer, probably six or eight turkey, two cranes, a bald eagle, I think that's it. But anyway, if you really want to get lost in the forest for a while, I would recommend this uh, Petoskey to uh, Mackinac Trail, especially this gravel part up at the north end. So I also wanted to tell everybody that, uh, not, that I'm feeling much more at home now that I'm in the Lower Peninsula of Michigan, this is where, when I was younger, um, we spent a lot of time uh, as a family. And um, up in the Upper Peninsula, it's kind of a different world. And when I told people where I was from, you know, where that I was riding around the lake and I had, I was getting going back to Elk Rapids, the, a couple, two people did say, "Oh, so you're a troll." which is the name that they have for us in the Lower Peninsula. Those that live below the bridge are considered trolls. And uh, we call people in the Upper Peninsula Upers because they're up in the UP. But uh, it's just that the two parts of Michigan are um, different from each other. Uh, but it's, a, it's an interesting difference and it's, it's good to experience both peninsulas. Anyway, I'm going to make my way south uh, towards Petoskey, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.
Hello everyone, I'm here along Karen Highway, which is Old Highway US 31, and I'm here at what's called the Karen Monument, which is a monument that was built along the highway to mark the 45th parallel or halfway between uh, the equator and the North Pole. Um, and actually when the new highway was built and they did more accurate surveys they found out that this monument is a couple miles off and the 45th parallel is actually a couple miles further to the north but what's a couple of miles among friends when you're measuring between the equator and the North Pole anyway also I realize I'm getting close to the end of my trip because I'm back in uh, cherry country look at the cherry trees here if you can see them they're just packed with cherries and um, the Grand Traverse area is known as the cherry capital of the world and you can see that by how many cherries are on all these trees that I've been going by for mile after mile well, I'm less than five miles from the end of my trip. I've gone all the way around the northern half of Lake Michigan. Had a great time. It's kind of a bittersweet moment. I'm really enjoying being out on the road and seeing the scenery, passing through towns, having lunches at pubs, and, um, and seeing campgrounds and state parks and but now it's going to be over in you know, a matter of about 15 or 20 minutes. So it's been a great time. This has been sort of like a trial journey. I've been thinking about going cross-country from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean. I've learned a lot on this trip. I've learned some things that I've got to improve. I've learned that uh, uh, I do have the strength and the stamina to go weeks on end on a bicycle and travel hundreds of miles and so uh, so that far is that much is true but I do need to uh, uh, learn how to uh, get a better sleep in my tent when I'm at campgrounds that's the biggest problem that I had on this trip was getting a good night's sleep every night so that's something that I got to think about before I do a cross-country trip but anyway I hope you enjoyed all the videos that I did on this trip. I really enjoyed the trip itself and the videos were something that um, kind of uh, occupied my time while I was riding along. So um, thanks for everything and um, I will talk to you later. Goodbye.